when it comes to branding, your origin story is something that is really kind of the crux that everything builds off of. And so it's one of those things that I'm like, why don't, why don't we go ahead and share ours? So I was in my twenties, you were in your thirties and we were thrown together in this band and, you know, we started to get to know each other through practice time, really. Anytime you're doing music together, whether it's worship music or pop music or whatever the thing is, you have to have a flow on stage. You have to be able to read each other. Yep. You have to really build a bond in order for the music to be effective. And, but that's how we got to know each other was really through the start of that worship team. And then, like she said, a handful of us from that realized we had a great sound together. Mm-hmm. And so let's start a band. At the time, I was doing freelance web development. Like I had built a site called Girls Can't What, which still exists, girlscantwhat.com. But it, um, I, I got so many people asking me, oh, I love your website. Will you build one for me? So I was an accidental web developer and <laughs> doing this freelance on the side while I'm working from home. I had two um, young daughters at the time and um, Trina was finishing up her degree in um, basically graphic design. Mm-hmm. Um, Minor in marketing. Yeah. And so um, I, development was my thing. I can code all day long but when it came to graphic design I was like man I'm so so I'm not that great but in our Trina and I was like hey <laughs> I've got these freelance gigs and I could really use some help in the art department you know, would you be interested in in helping me out so we, that's how kind of our business started was I just needed a graphic designer. <laughs> like, unbeknownst to Gretchen, I had only done one web design project before she invited me to take part in this and do this with her. And so, you know, you do what anybody does in that situation. Sure, I can do that, right? And in your head, you're just like, I'm going to figure out, I'll get better as I go. <laughs> Our business had grown so much um, that we, we incorporated, turned it into a name that... It was terrible at the time. <laughs> Tell this, Absolutely. okay, no. this is real people. This is, this is, <sighs> names and brands are so yeah. important. Our first name of our company was Time for Design, which sounds okay, but yeah. how did we, how did we spell it? We spelled it time, like the freaking herb. Like, and we, we had all this cutesy thing, like your brand recipe and, mm-hmm. you know, Gretchen, like take, take Gretchen, chef Gretchen yeah, chef. chef, chef Gretchen with her I don't even cook intelligence and a dash of sarcasm, you know, like that was, oh God, it was, bad. <laughs> that was where we started. It's, yeah, it was, yeah. well, at the time I wouldn't say it was bad. It was, there were a lot of companies doing that type of cutesy little thing, um, on the, cause the web was still a little young at that time. Um, and yeah, because we we started our agency in 06. Yeah. yeah. And I've I've been I've been doing web development since 1993 or four. Yeah. Um, so the web was still pretty young at this time. Um, but anyway, it, it was so cutesy that every time we tell people the name of our business, we have to spell <laughs> the first word. It's time, like T H Y M E, you know, like the herb, and people would be like, uh, okay. So that didn't last very long. Um, and, <laughs> and we eventually became Left Right Labs because that was a better fit. And there's more to that story. But yes. anyway, um, yeah, so it, it took us about, I would say, you know, close to two years from the first moment of me saying, hey, you know, Photoshop, come help me with this to, hey, we got a lot of work on our plate and we're doing pretty good. What do you say you quit your job and we do this full time? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's pretty wild. You know, we like to tell people we went from bandmates to best friends to business partners. And, you know, what's so cool in that whole story is as we were, you know, bandmates, that's where we were kind of developing our friendship. And then as our band grew, we got to a place where we were, you know, uh, traveling, we were doing competing. We were, uh, we recorded an album in Nashville back in 2010. We knew how to move an audience. And that is so core to branding is like being able to connect with people, being able to read a crowd, being able to move them when the energy Mm -hmm. shifts and and understand what they're needing and how your skills or your gift or your talent is actually able to serve that audience. Yeah. And so that was something we'd really become 
completely adept at and really mastered in the band and and having done that for 10 years and all those performances that's that's really what good branding is yeah. is when everything is cohesive and just flows and you don't have to worry about oh i had to do this post and i had to set this thing and i have my youtube has to be this it's when it all just works together that's just good branding and you don't have to think about your marketing yeah you just it flows well and and i think that that is part of like another kind of iteration in our business, we started out really just focused on the design and development. And as we grew, we wanted to do more and more brand strategy with each other because with, and with our clients, because, you know, as Gretchen is saying, like, it's really getting to know one another, being able to flow that way, that doesn't happen if you don't have a plan. You know, so the, it's so fun to look back and see like how these steps led to the other. And it's the same thing when it comes to building your brand and thinking about how does your origin story flow into the brand that you're building and why you're passionate about what you do and how it's going to impact other people. Because then that trickles down. Like when you figure that out for yourself here, it trickles down into, well, how does that play into the, the products and the packages that I create? for people? How does that play into the way that I connect with my audience? You know, there's a lot of branding agencies that have an approach of they want to be very high level. They want to maybe intentionally kind of speak over their audience's head to show authority. That's not the way we like to do it. We are used to moving with an audience, to directing an audience, to feeling exactly where they're at and to going like, look, I see you. I understand where you are. I know you and I'm going to move with you and I'm going to guide you to where I can see you need to go next. And I think that that is so ingrained in the way that we mm -hmm dive into brands with our clients. For us, our, our favorite kind of client is a thought leader, like somebody who already has a stage, they have an audience of their own, they understand the skill of moving that audience. But what they're looking to do is how do I make that pivot when it needs to go to the next level without having all the normal levels of communication. And because we've worked so well together for so long in the band and you have to read those silent cues, we're so good at that. Like that I would say is really one of yeah. our superpowers when it comes to branding because a client comes to us and if we're going to work with you, like we're going to drink the Kool-Aid, we're going to read your books. <laughs> we're going to follow, you know, what you've done on social media. We're going to be following what you have done, um, you know, in, in writing or on your website, we're going through all of it and we're going to want to know you at every level. And so then that really plays into the way that we approach your brand and the way your audience needs to connect with you. So I think that's so fun. Oh, but I feel like over the years with any brand, with any company, you're going to have your ups and downs. And so when you can know your own origin story and you can really remember why are you doing this? Why does this matter to you? That fuels you and keeps you moving forward. And it's going to keep you focused every time you need to iterate your brand. Because the longer you've had your brand, I mean, we've had our company for 18 years now. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the ways that that has evolved and changed over the years. When we started, a lot of what I was doing was um, basically order taking. People would be like, hey, I like your website. I want kind of the same thing, but here's what I want. And I would just be like, okay. And I would make it for them. And I, and that was it. That was just make, make the site and move on. And um, comparing that back to um, our, our music and what we were doing with that, our best gigs were the, the ones where we got to choose how the music flowed and what, what order it was. We, there were occasionally places where we would go and they would be like, this is what we want. And we were kind of stuck with a certain set list or a, um, maybe it was only like three songs or something like that. Those were like, nah, those weren't the greatest. But when we had control to just go with the flow and go with what the audience wanted, because that's that's what makes it great. Bringing that over into our web development and our, our branding and design and strategy and all of that, um, we, we started out just kind of like taking orders from, from clients mm -hmm. and saying, okay, well, if you want this, sure, we can make that. And then we started seeing that some of those folks did not know what they were doing. They just saw somebody else and like, I want that. I want make, make it like that. But we're, and we would be internally going, but that that's yeah. Not, we'd that's we'd be having fit. conversations. Like we'd get off our client call and we would go, that's not what they need. Like that yeah. is, so we really started to go, okay, this is our responsibility mm -hmm. to speak up yep. and to be able to give, you know, 
um, pushback, really respectful <laughs> pushback, but yeah, we're, we're going to tell you, look, like, especially now we've been doing this for 18 years. We have been in the digital landscape, like we're OGs. All right. So <laughs> this is, we started like the internet had not even been around very long when we're doing this. So websites hadn't been around very long. And so to, to really be able to dig in and to use all that experience, we're speaking from experience and from mm -hmm. what we, the research that we do on the industry. And so it's important to pay attention to that and to tap into that and be willing to shift for yourself. So now we say, you know, we'll tell you the truth. We don't care how famous you are. <laughs> We're always going to be respectful, but we are going to say, okay, it is our recommendation that you do X, Y, Z, because if we don't do that, then we're doing you a disservice. And I think it's the same thing in, in the way that your brand treats your audience. If you're not giving them the whole truth, if you're not, you know, sharing with them about your entire product and how it serves them, or if you have a protocol, or if you have um, this perfect piece of real estate that serves all their needs, like if you're not giving them the full answer from whatever your brand perspective is, you're doing them a disservice. And the further we got into it, we really started to tap into what are our strengths? Who are the people that we enjoy working with the most? Who are the people that we feel are making an impact we can align with? And, you know, it really ended up kind of intersecting with our personal lives. Mm -hmm. And so do you want to share a little bit, Gretchen, about how we made a second pivot into kind of getting into the health and wellness space? Yeah. So we were, we we're trying to figure out what's the through line with our clients. There are certain ones where it was just a really good fit. We had good camaraderie. We um, really helped them grow their business. There was just mutual respect on both ends. But we were seeing that across different industries. So it wasn't industry specific. And of course, at the time, everybody was niching down into some industry. And we were just like, yeah, but we can't pick because we have, <laughs> we have lots of good ones here. <laughs> and so we uh, we literally sat down with a piece of paper and, and a pencil and just started writing down all the characteristics and things of different clients that, that we were really ha having success with and really enjoyed working with. And then trying to kind of just cross-referencing what that looked like. And it turned out to be people who are just in the health and wellness space or good thought leaders um, who really were trying to um, better themselves and use that to then better other people. And and um, those were the kind of people that were like, you know, that that's what we want to do. We're happy to be the behind the scenes people to a lot of our clients. And, and you know, we, we work with some really famous folks like take Layla Ali, for example, but Layla's the forefront. She's the face mm -hmm. of her brand. We're kind of the behind the scenes people. Um, but we're very happy to just, if she's calling us up and saying, Hey, I'm going to be on good morning America tomorrow. Can you, you know, do X, Y, Z for me? Absolutely. I mean, I, and I don't, I don't need credit for that. I don't need her to call me out on that. I don't need any of that. But the, the, um, the through line on that is people who are genuinely out to help other people, mm -hmm. those are the clients that we want to work with. And we find that those types of clients are the ones that, um, you know, we have the good camaraderie, we, we have the that good rapport. And those are the ones that that I'm excited to get up in the morning and help because <laughs> I'm actually just, I'm, I'm part of their mission. And uh, I think that's a super exciting thing. And yeah. So yeah, it definitely is. Well, you know, so we started with that pulse in a paycheck effect. And then we really started kind of niching down to who are the people who are focused on serving others. And what that kind of turned into for us was really a lot of them were in the health and wellness space mm -hmm. or nonprofit. Um, so health and wellness is broad, right? I mean, this, this means it was everybody from uh, psychologists, therapists, somatic healers, mm -hmm. uh, nutritionists, fitness professionals. I mean, it really kind of runs the gamut. And so that has been our heartbeat for quite a while now. And, and we've had kind of some personal stories that have flowed in with that. You know, I actually lost my mom to diabetes and heart disease back in 2015. And so that was one of those moments that we already had quite a few clients in the health and wellness space at that time. And so we kind of had a conversation about like, let's double down. What if, what if, you know, I can't be the one on the platform teaching you about, um, you know, exact health and wellness techniques, but I can use my branding powers for good. I can use my ability to connect with an audience and to understand what they need emotionally. Mm -hmm. And for you to understand, you know, what systems are needed and the way that, that the user experience should be crafted to reach those people. That is how we can use 
our skills to support people like that. So, you know, that's been really incredible. And even since then, you know, I really feel like our niche now is really focused on thought leaders. And so we still have a lot in the health and wellness space, but we also have a lot in high level business sectors. We're talking about business mastermind groups or, you know, attorneys or realtors, Mm -hmm. like, you know, finance advisors, people that just kind of run that gamut. But really what they're trying to do is they're saying, we're taking our skill and we're putting heart behind it. Like we have a real mission and a real passion behind the way we want to get our message out there and who we want to impact. And so I think that's why for us, unforgettable brands are something that is so important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think our our favorite ones to dig into are really rebrands, people that need to come in and um, start over or make a pivot or just kind of scale to that next level. And that's something we really resonate with because of our story, how we got started, how our business iterated over the years, how we got more and more confident and concise about who we want to serve. And so it's been such a blast to be able to help people think about a rebrand. There's so many moving parts. We're left, right labs. So it's the left brain coming together with all of the systems, that engineering mindset, uh, the real kind of finite ways of looking at things. It's the right brain who's thinking about how you're going to connect emotionally with your audience. How can you carry the story of where you've come from into where you're going and find that golden thread, that through line that's really going to carry your brand to that next level? And more importantly, how do you speak to the top tier of your audience that you've already built? Because most of our clients, they already have large platforms. Mm -hmm. But when you make a pivot like that, you don't have to take everybody with you. They're still going to follow you because they love you. But maybe you're wanting to create new high ticket products. Maybe you're looking for an opportunity to to pivot completely in your field. You know, that's what we're best at doing. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, let's dig, dig in. Let's craft those conversations. Let's really think about how we can make that all fit together. And I think it really goes back to our days on stage, Mm -hmm. pivoting between songs, reading an audience, adding in things that weren't even in our original set and just doing it at the drop of a hat. And I think it is not your job as a thought leader to figure out how the heck all those little pieces are going to fit together. Find the team that can do that. The team that wants to speak your language, the team that wants to help you find that through line and has the organization and the systems to help you do that, to Mm -hmm. to have a rebrand that's going to flow simply. So that's a little bit about our origin story. Of course, you could ask more things. We'd love to hear, you know, your questions and your thoughts in the comments. And if this resonated with you, you know, how have you pivoted over the years? How have you seen your brand move? What are your questions about branding and rebranding? We'd love to know. Well, I'm Trina. And I'm Gretchen. And we're Left Right Labs. Talk to you soon. Bye.